You can call it what you want, but we're at war, even if it doesn't feel like it yet. Welcome to Outside Xbox and to Xbox's brand new console, the Xbox Series X. Clearly, you're aware of the main job of the Xbox Series X, which is to play extremely pretty next-gen games. But that's not all that this towering monolith of a console can do. Between the brand new technology inside the box and the updated software that runs on it, the Series X can do a bunch of new stuff that's fun and useful. There is one thing it can't do anymore, though, and it might surprise you. Here are six new things the Xbox Series X can do, and one that it won't. One of the major advantages of the Series X is the ability to more quickly switch between multiple games at once, picking up exactly where you left them and without having to sit through all the title screens for the 14,000th time. Powered by Unreal Engine, you don't say. What you might not realise is that this option functions when you put the console on standby and even if you shut the entire thing down and pop out the power lead. Just make sure you actually press the power button, don't just yank the cable out right in the middle of a crucial Dark Souls boss fight. I mean, unless it's going really badly. Just think, you could conceivably switch the console off, unplug it, put it in a box, put that box on an aeroplane and fly airmail all the way around the world, and when it arrived back in your hands you could switch it on and pick up Gears 5 exactly where you left off. Roger there, Control. Or alternatively, just enjoy your new console and save money on airmail fees. Your choice. Last fall, we announced our ambition to empower everyone everywhere to play by bringing Xbox to the cloud. We will do this in two ways, through Project X Cloud and through console streaming. You may have heard of Project X Cloud, Microsoft's actually pretty exciting game streaming system that allows you to play a selection of Xbox games on your mobile phone using a Bluetooth controller. It's bundled in as part of Game Pass Ultimate and genuinely works pretty well if you happen to be somewhere that your Xbox isn't. The idea that it's locked to one device is, is just totally absent. I want to be the center of my world um, and I want the devices around me and the services around me to be available wherever I want them to be. But if you're just at home and someone's commandeered the TV to watch Bake Off, it seems a bit wasteful to fire up a server somewhere across the country when you have your Series X sitting there on the TV unit all eager to please. Remote Play allows you to connect directly to your own console via your home network. This allows you to play your entire installed collection of games, not just the xCloud selection, virtually lag-free from your mobile phone. It'll even switch the console on for you if it's currently on standby. This is tech that was available to members of the Xbox Insider program previously, but as of the release of the Xbox Series X, which integrates far more closely with the new Xbox app, it's now open to absolutely everyone. This means that you can play your Series X when it's either not practical or appropriate to be slouched in front of the telly. Just be sure not to leap up and shout obscenities while secretly playing under the table during family dinner. Remember, it's only a game. Ah, oh, son of a... With Xbox 360, we've created technology that will enable people from every age and every corner of the planet to gather together in new ways. We can't help but feel that Microsoft took it a bit personally when everyone complained that the Xbox 360's fan noise sounded like a bag of angry snakes. Not least because even that wasn't enough fan power to prevent the red ring of death. That must be why each successive Xbox console has gotten more and more quiet, to the point where the Xbox One X makes barely a whisper. Well, the Series X beats that by being effectively silent. Thanks to its tall form factor and enormous top vent, it can expel a larger volume of hot air so the fans don't have to work quite so hard as inside a smaller console. On the downside, I'm definitely going to accidentally spill tea down that thing. This silent running means no longer will noisy fans drown out a classic mumbling monologue from a gritty gaming protagonist. I never asked for this. I didn't quite catch that, Adam. Did you say you did ask for this? Because if so, that's great. A consequence of all this clever cooling, though, is that the top of that Series X chimney stack does pump out a lot of heat, sometimes even when the console itself is on standby, but it's working away on downloads in the background. But look at it this way, if your boiler packs up at 5pm on Christmas Eve, as they are seemingly designed to do, you can always gather the family around the warm exhaust port of the Xbox Series X. 
fire up Gears 5 in 4K and 60 frames per second, and you might even be able to roast some chestnuts. <laughs> Most new televisions sold these days feature technology called High Dynamic Range, also known as HDR, which offers brighter white colours and deeper black colours for a more vibrant image. It's impressive stuff, the only problem is, console games have only supported the technology for a couple of years, and up till now, only a minority of games had HDR coded in. The Xbox Series X handily solves this problem with a technology called Auto HDR, which is activated by default in the Video Options menu. This is a clever machine learning algorithm that calculates and applies HDR lighting to every game you play on the console, even your ropey old Xbox 360 Back Compat collection. Obviously, you can't see the difference on a non-HDR YouTube video, but just imagine that you've had your corneas seared off. It's all part of Xbox's general commitment to making the Series X about playing beloved games that you already own, not just the latest $70 Xbox Series X exclusive. Which is good, because there aren't any yet. See you in 2021, Halo Infinite. Wait here. Oh, hey, speaking of games you already own... We've heard a lot about the free Series X upgrades to existing Xbox One games like Fortnite, Sea of Thieves, or the transformative Gears of War 5 update. Okay, now. What's equally pleasing is that some games which ran like absolute trash even on an Xbox One X immediately benefit from the increased power of the Series X even without an update. Take excellent hardcore racing simulator Assetto Corsa Competizione, for example, which ran like your nan's holiday photo slideshow when it launched on Xbox One. The game's issues were a combination of both graphical and processor limitations, but the Series X hardware represents a significant upgrade in both those departments. As a result, ACC runs much more smoothly and you can no longer blame choppy frame rates for your embarrassing accidents. Oh well, back to blaming Mercury being in retrograde. What's more, if you install these older Xbox One games to the Series X's fast internal storage rather than running them off a USB 3 external drive, they'll also benefit from quicker loading times. Again, on Xbox One, ACC gave you enough time between races to listlessly scroll through social media and make yourself thoroughly miserable. On the Series X, the races load almost instantaneously, so you've no time for that. It's a real quality of life improvement. You could even argue that, philosophically speaking, games like Assetto Corsa Competizione are technically next-gen games because they were literally too demanding to run well on the previous consoles. However, you will fail your philosophy degree. All right, then we call it. Let's go! Hydraulic external power to on. No! We get that hatch open. What? Kid, listen to your old man. You gotta get out of there. Damn it, we came here to do this, so let's get it done. The ignition test commence. You're probably quite excited enough that the Series X can pump out games at 4K resolution at a rock solid 60 frames per second. For the vast majority of normal, functioning humans, that's more than sufficient. But if you sit as eyeball fryingly close to the television as we do, you might still be able to see the telltale jaggies that come from being able to identify individual pixels. Lucky, then, that the Series X also has confirmed support for 8K visuals. At the moment, that support is almost entirely theoretical. Very few people have 8K screens, and there's not a whole lot of 8K content out there to consume. It's hardly surprising given that, because of the weird way resolutions work, 8K is actually four times as many pixels to colour in as 4K. Damn you, maths! You win again! As a result, you could reasonably expect a game that runs in 4K on the Series X to run four times worse at 8K on the same console. Oh. 
The good news is that if your game ordinarily runs at 120 frames per second in 4K, that's still an entirely reasonable 30 frames per second in 8K. Although we don't reckon 8K gaming is going to be commonplace this generation, it is good to know that it's a future-proof potential option on the Series X. We say future-proof because you do have to ponder the question, how close would you have to sit to your display to need anything more than 8K resolution? If I put my face any closer, I'm going to have to squeegee the eyeball juice off the screen. Okay, those are the new things the Xbox Series X can do, but what about the one thing it won't do? We're bringing a new Kinect sensor paired with every Xbox One, which puts you at the center of your entertainment. Kinect is completely redesigned to respond instantly to you, your voice, and your gestures. That's right, Kinect is officially dead. To be fair, this motion control camera was on its last legs when the Xbox One S and One X launched without the dedicated Kinect 2.0 socket that was on the original Xbox One. But if you simply had to play D4 Dark Dreams Don't Die, you could use a special USB adapter and it would work. <laughs> That's no longer an option. The Series X simply refuses to play them. While they show up in your game library, there's a little prohibited icon to show that either you can't play the game or the ghost from the Ghostbusters logo is back at large. Probably the first one. So yes, almost 10 years to the day since the Xbox 360 version of Kinect first launched, this groundbreaking motion control technology is no more. Let's now enjoy a montage of some of those happy memories from the last decade of Kinect. Alright, that's perhaps unfair. There was some great stuff like Kinect Sports, Disney Fantasia and Dance Central, but it's fair to say the technology failed to fulfil its potential. Even when Kinect was bundled with the original Xbox One, developers and gamers never really fell in love with it. So it's time to finally wave goodbye to Kinect, and then wave again because it didn't detect it, and one more time, there it is. <laughs> Thanks for watching this video about the Xbox Series X. Let us know in the comments if you're getting a Series X, and if so, what's exciting you most about it. What are you going to play on it that's not Halo Infinite? Do tell us down below. Like and subscribe for much more on this brand new Xbox, and why not sample these two other fine videos that we've displayed on your screen for your viewing convenience. See you next time on Outside Xbox.